Welcome to episode 831. The topic today is love really is the answer, and here's why. Before I tell you why <laughs> and explain more, let me, let me, please allow me to introduce myself and give you some clarification about why, why I'm here, what I do, and why I do these talks every day. So first an introduction. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't already figured that out. I am the I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which I'll put a link in the back end so you check it out. The book for singles and couples, men and women about love and relationships, all about love. That's a hint, by the way. Secondly, I'm an inspirational speaker. And thirdly, I'm a love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And occasionally I miss my footing and slips off the arm of the chair. Um, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, helping women find balance in love, excuse me, create balance in love, life, and business. And being a passionate champion for the divine feminine is what informs my work, but also what is what inspired these talks over two and a half years ago, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Which brings us to today, episode number 831. There's a lot of these out there. And this, by the way, is a Facebook Live, in case, you're, in case I start interacting with people you won't see if you're watching on YouTube, because this does go to Facebook and YouTube, and I'll tell you about that at the back end. Okay, that's all the preliminaries out of the way. Let's talk in. Let's jump in. So, the topic today is love really is the answer. And here's why. I'm going to give you some obvious pieces first, then I'm going to take you for a little ride, different direction, just to give you some understanding. Because this is the thing about love. It's not always what you think it is. And I'll explain more about that in a moment too. So... As I said at the beginning, I am a love and relationships expert. I help women create amazing relationships, attract amazing relationships, and also find the way through their lives to have what they want. So love is very much part of the work I do and teach and express and support, and especially finding relationships that are fully loving, expressing, and everything else, of course. I mean, that's what everybody wants, isn't it? And yes, in a lot of ways, love is really the answer to solve a lot of the problems when you're in a relationship. For example, if you are in a position with your partner, and there's a I'm right, you're wrong situation going on, or you're wrong, they're right even, that can go on for quite a while. And there's often no, no common ground to meet in because it's right, wrong, and there's opposites, and you know, black and white, there's no ability to connect in there. But love is the solution, love is the answer, love is the healing agent that can dissolve those separations and bring you back together again. However, when you do that, you can't just go, well, you can try it going, you know, I don't matter if you're right and I'm wrong, I still love you, something like that. You could, you could do that, but it might not work that way. It's more about the fact that when you love enough, when you fully express the love you have, try to bump in the tripod, then you will be able to come from a place of understanding and you can move close to where your partner is. I'm not saying you go all the way to their position, although sometimes it's quite a, a, an opportunity to see through their eyes what they're seeing. But having love as your mainstay, having love as your um, raison d'etre, your reason for being in that relationship, provides you with a space to come closer to your partner so you can resolve things. So love really is the answer in a lot of ways, solving arguments and discussions that are happening in, in a relationship. And it was also the guiding light to find the real relationship you want to be in. Because if you're in a relationship where there isn't any love, I'd be concerned. Because if you're in a, and I'm speaking of romantic relationships, by the way, I mean... Business relationships may not have so much love in them, just to be clear. But to have an understanding that when you're in a relationship, you are expressing love and receiving love. Oh, little sidebar coming up. <laughs> this is what happens, by the way. Then you'll find yourself in a place where you'll know you're in the right relationship because the love will flow easily. And that's one of the gauges you can use, by the way. When love flows easily to and from you and the other person, that's a good indication that you're in a good relationship. Now couple of sidebars I want to put in there. One of these things is if you're sitting there waiting for the other person to love you and you're not willing to love them fully first or you're not willing to express your own loving for yourself first, that's another side, okay, sidebars are showing up all over the place. Then you might be in a challenging place because you're in a place where you're actually offering to be a codependent partner. Now I've talked about this many times before and codependency is one of those things that we fall into as an easy pattern because as human beings we tend to find ourselves attached to other people. We did it with our parents, our parents probably did it with each other, and we've done it in our past relationships, most of us have. I'm of the mindset that we can change that going forward, we can move out of codependency into interdependence. But one of the traps of codependency is where you think that the other person's love is what saves you from yourself, or the other person's attention makes you feel better, the other person's good 
mood and expression makes you feel good as well. All those things put the onus on the other person, which is a codependent way of living, not healthy. So in that paradigm, to really love yourself, that's the sidebar is going to go on the second time, is where you get to a place of ownership of who you are. So when your relationships come from the loving of yourself, then it becomes additive to that. And so you're not looking for a relationship to make you feel whole. You're looking for a relationship from the place of wholeness because you love yourself first. And yes, that's a key, by the way, loving yourself first in any relationship, be it romantic or otherwise. But the piece I want to speak to more directly, though, is when you love yourself enough, you have the awareness, confidence, and trust in yourself to say no. And this is a big piece I didn't talk about earlier, and it's a piece that a lot of people don't think about, is that sometimes, and I'm looking from the point of view of what I call um, taking care of yourself. When you love yourself enough, because sometimes love is not sufficient if you don't love yourself enough, then you make choices that are self-supportive, that are taking care of yourself, which means that you'll walk away from situations that are honoring of you. That's not against anybody. That's for you. Self-love to respect yourself, to honor yourself and take care of yourself is a fundamental way of making sure you say yes to what works and no to what doesn't. And that understanding, that shift of awareness, for a lot of times will, res will release any sense of maybe guilt for leaving something or judgment because you didn't do what you think the other people wanted from you. And when you start looking from the point of view that you're choosing to say no and you're walking away from situations, circumstances, relationships that are not working for you because you love yourself first, that's when you start to shift out of the paradigm of thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done that. The judgment that I should have, shouldn't have left, that I made a mistake, or the guilt that I left them, I let them down, or I dropped them, or I didn't take care of my responsibility with them. If you did or didn't, that's something you can work out later, but when you take the choice from self-love first, and you respect yourself and love yourself first, then you will start to see that the choices you make come from that place of respect of who you are. Now, a lot of us didn't learn this lesson growing up. I didn't, certainly at some point in my life, I'm better at it now, Actually, a lot better at it now. But for some people who are out in the world, it may not be you, but somebody you know, this shift of awareness to say, I'm saying no because I care about who I am. I'm saying no because I take care of myself. I say no because I trust and value who I am. So I'm not going to do that thing, whatever that thing is, whether it's a relationship or a, a task or an agreement. That shifts the onus from, oh, I shouldn't do that, but I need to back away to, no, I'm saying yes to myself and no to the situation. That's a shift in consciousness for some people, a shift in awareness, because a lot of people don't realize that actually taking, saying no is a loving action. In fact, for a lot of people, saying no is somehow a negative action. And I'm saying no. <laughs> Literally saying no. I'm saying no. Love, saying no is a loving action when you're taking care of yourself and saying no to situations that don't work for you. It sounds simplistic. But for a lot of people, the wiring they have inside because of the upbringing or because of whatever, puts in a place where yes is a loving action and no is not. And that's not true. Saying yes or saying no is a loving action based upon where you are and what serves you, what supports you. Now, so it means serve from a point of view of loving action, not ego being served. That's not what I'm talking about here. But understanding this difference can be a game changer for some people. And recognizing that this is a... Um, choice point will free you up to have more, more joy, more love, and more celebration in your life. So my invitation to you is to look at what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to and seeing whether love is really focused. If you're not saying no enough times, that may be a clue, by the way. Either, either one, you're getting everything you want, which is possible, but if you're not saying no when perhaps it would be better if you did, then you can realize that maybe you're not loving yourself enough. You're not honoring yourself enough. You're not putting yourself first. You're putting somebody else some situation before yourself. And this is, again, is that codependency trap. Is when you put other situations ahead of yourself, other agreements, other people, other things, before your self-care and self-support, that's a codependent action too, because you're putting your power outside yourself. It's also not serving you because you're not doing it from a place of love. You're doing it from a place of duty, perhaps, or responsibility, or think you should do it because that's what the right people do. That's a whole other conversation about being part of the pack. I'm not going to go there. No, not going to go there. Just to be just to be just to be clear. All right. 
So I hope you get the point I'm trying, attempting to make here is that self-love is a, is a guiding principle to really honor and respect yourself and keep you in a place where you are really celebrating, honoring and respecting who you are. So the choices you make and the intentions you hold are supportive of you. And that every relationship that you do choose to be in is a choice from self-love first so that you make honorable choices for you and support yourself in where you're going. And again, if you find it's not lining up for you, you can say no from a loving place. Again, no guilt, no judgment, no resentment, none of that. You say no because you love yourself enough to say, you know, I respect myself enough to say no to this situation. That might save you a lot of grief down the road, by the way. So keep that one in, in mind and keep it close to your heart. It's a powerful place to be. Is there anything else on that one? This is a short, well, I was going to say, there was something else on my mind I want to talk about as a PS on this. Um, but I'll make sure this point is this landed. So I trust this has landed for you and you've got some value from this. I will put a link in the comments, I'll put a few links in the comments for the self-love practice that, I was, that I've been teaching, my guided meditation. Now I'll be in the comments for you to get because I recommend it highly if you're not, if you want to love yourself more and be stronger in your self-support. I'll put a link in the comments for my book, as I mentioned, because I do mention it in the beginning, and a link for you to reach out to me and have a talk. Complimentary chat with me so you can find out where you want to go and where you want to get in your relationship choices going forward. Something else has been on my mind today and I want to share about it because a friend of mine was posting different pictures and stuff because tomorrow is September 11th. And I think anybody who's watching this, anybody, period, especially in the United States, knows where they were at that time of the morning on September 11th. I don't want to go into too much detail about it. There's so much I could talk about, not about politically and about conspiracy and everything else. I'm not going there. What I want to talk about, though, is this. Because tomorrow is the anniversary of September 11th, and it's now, what, 18 years later? As somebody posted, I just want to reiterate what that po my friend posted on Facebook, was that the a lot of people went to sleep tonight, September 10th, not knowing they wouldn't see each other again after September 11th. That is, I know it sounds depressing and sad, but what I want to say, though, is the flip side of that is don't take people for granted. I've recently heard of some people, got, somebody got killed in a car accident, some people had an accident on a, on a motorcycle. Stuff's happening. So I want to say to you, don't take your friends for granted. Don't take your loved ones for granted. Make, a, um, make an effort. Make a choice. Take action to actually express to those you love that you love them. This is kind of a PS from the early, the early part of the broadcast. But because tomorrow is such an interesting anniversary for a lot of people, I mean, you know, 3,000 people are gone. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So the people you know, you care about, you love, make sure you reach out and tell them that. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, this is not to be maudlin or to be depressed or to be depressing. I just want to say this, that as I said before about self-love, it's also important, I believe, to express love for those you care about. Take the opportunity to tell them you care about them. Take the opportunity to tell them you love them. Take the opportunity to reach out and care because you don't know how long you've got. So that's my little um, PS and also something about tomorrow. So just to say that, that I appreciate you watching. If you want to get out, reach out for more support again, I'll put links in the comments for my self-love practice, my book and, my, and a talk with me. And I'll let you know whether you find the replays in case you haven't seen my other broadcast. This one's a bit shorter because it was a succinct point I was making today. So, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. I also put this onto my YouTube channel, and I'll tell you where you can find the replays as well. So, personal page is Barry Selby on Facebook. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook first, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. And then the replays go to YouTube, because I was going to have a backup plan. <laughs> my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And all my broadcasts are there. In fact, that's an easy place to search for them from what I've been doing when I check on both sides. It's easy to find my broadcasts there because you can do keyword searches, which is much easier. Um, for at least what's in the title. So having said all that, I appreciate you watching this broadcast. I do invite your questions, thoughts, comments below if you want to search or anything. And if you want to reach out for support, I'll leave links in the comments where you can get the support you need. I thank you for watching as always. I will see you again tomorrow. So please, especially because of tomorrow, that being an anniversary that it is, take care of yourself and take care of those you love. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.